Thanks to all our supporters, whether you are a subscriber to the channel or just prefer to watch from the shadows. Your enthusiasm for these videos encourages me to create more. This offering is a brief introduction to an admittedly ambitious plan, the step-by-step -step awakening of a Panther Model 50 from its long slumber, putting it to rights and recording a first road trial in over 30 years. A 325cc Villiers Panther went on my Christmas list when I rode one back in the 1980s, lent to me by the POC's then machine registrar, Sid Wilkinson. The Villiers 3T is the beefiest and possibly the thirstiest of the two-stroke Villiers twins. P&M provided a beefed up frame for it, with the forks and handsome eight inch hubs used on the heavyweight slopers. I picked this project up a year or two after my ride, worn out and sidelined by a generator coil failure. Last on the road in 1989, the bike's battery carrier, an old test tube rack, underlines the Model 50's end-of-life status. These Villiers Panthers were generally adorned with tinware and in common with other scooter-inspired motorcycles from the late 1950s, this one had shed all non-essentials. I collected photographs of bikes seen at club events, trawled the internet and nagged friends for dimensions to help create the missing metalwork. We ran a 197cc Villiers Panther Model 10.4 for a time, but it didn't prove a popular bike, for reasons which I prefer not to go into here. Oh, OK, I'll own up. I suggested that Angie ride it to a rally in France, where it proved to have the stamina of a sloth, needing a little lie down every 10 or 15 miles. On the plus side, we did perfect our technique for changing hot spark plugs without burning fingers. Before the little 197cc Villiers was passed on, and I say with remarkable forethought, I removed its side panels and took glass fibre moulds and I bought from POC spares man Nick Kelly a glass fibre copy of the unique parrot beak fairing fitted to models 45 and 50. The plan was to use these as patterns and recreate the missing items in steel, developing basic skills picked up on a week's course in panel beating at Leeds Technical College. I'm also an avid watcher of Ray Shaleen's excellent YouTube channel, Pro Shaper Workshop, and I'll add a link below the title. This is not a tutorial, but I hope it inspires some of you to explore the satisfying craft of metal bashing. Outlined here are some of the basic moves to make a pair of side panels in 20 gauge, that's 0.9 millimeter cold rolled mild steel. This is plasma cut, cropped, stretched, shrunk, ground and welded using plastic and steel faced hammers, a hollow log, a sandbag and an English wheel for smoothing with both tungsten arc, that's TIG and wire or MIG to weld the sections and patch up inevitable blunders. Mm -hmm. 
One of Ray Shaleen's mantras is metal is clay, a reference to the possibility of squeezing it thick or stretching it thin. The difference is that unlike clay, steel can't be worked with the fingers. No, it can't be worked with the fingers. Oh. From Ray we learn the relationship between a panel's area and its arrangement. For instance, a round bowl and an oval bowl might have identical area values, but the arrangement would be different. Grab the sides of a round bowl and pull outward, and you create an oval bowl without altering its area value. No stretching or shrinking has occurred, but the shape has changed. Well, obviously I didn't mean pull that hard. Here the slightly twisted front panel's arrangement is reset by welding in square cropped sides. The left hand toolbox also has a cutaway to clear the chain guard, but it's simpler to complete a handed pair and cut and weld the reversed section later. Clamps hold everything in place before tacking up and then fully welding. Future videos will describe the process in greater detail. Now I'll belt up for a bit and let my hands do the talking.
So that's it for the first session. A Happy New Year 2022 to all, or if you are late for the party, a happy whatever and whenever it is. Oh!